Welcome to your morning meeting, number 1467, on July the 3rd. Please stand for the singing of O Canada. Thank you very much. Our inspirational moment. I think that's Kim, is it not? If she's on. She's on? I think I saw her. No? No, Kim? Don't see her. No? Okay. Random inspirational moment. Any volunteers? I've got one. Please. Uh, so yesterday we had our transition meeting for McEwen Rotor Act and uh, the incoming president, Miles Dykes, showed a video from the new president uh, of Rotary International, Holger. And it was just really, really great to hear what he had to say. And uh, I feel really good about what's coming in RI right, this upcoming year. And so should all of you. He seems like a really, really great guy. And he's really just focused on having fun. So I think that uh, aligns well with our president. And I think it'll be a good year. Wonderful. Thank you, Laura. Introduction of guests. I don't know if I saw any guests. Are there any guests? We may have scared them off with the whole strategic plan thing. No guests? Well, we want to do the welcome song anyways? <laughs> no, okay, we'll skip right by there. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, this is the strategic plan for 2021. And um, I will take you through fairly quickly the basics of how this came together, um, a, a bit of the background, decisions that were made, and recommendations going forward. So um, if there's anything, maybe just hang off on questions until the end, and then we'll um, go through them all so that I can keep a pace going. Possibilities are all around us. Everywhere we look, we see opportunity, we see potential in unexpected places. And when we share our knowledge, vision, and connections, we turn great ideas into action. In communities all around the world that we call home. Like transforming an old bus to feed hungry children or providing life saving equipment to those who need it most. From fighting disease to rebuilding schools, together. We can make real change happen. We are Rotary. 
We are people of action. Get involved today at rotary.org. Not again, nope. Uh, so the process that we went through was we started with the membership survey and um, we'll hit some highlights of that. We talked about goals. We went and developed the structure for a strategic plan. And now the committee plans will come out of those. So um, we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, we followed the Rotary International strategic planning process. Uh, phase one, determine your status. How's your club doing? So that was the membership survey, develop a vision make a plan, track your progress. So we went into the membership survey. We had 50 responses, um, which was really very good. Um, but I just want to provide some context. Whenever I look at survey results, particularly on something that I've been working on, um, when we've been working on, it's near and dear to your heart. It's, it's hard not to take it personally. So um, people make comments because they care. They care so they share. It's not a criticism. Um, all the efforts are appreciated. We're standing on the shoulders of those who have come before us. So we're um, um, only able to make progress because of that. Um, we don't take it personally. Uh, there are always opportunities for improvements. And I've been asked a couple of times, is this anonymous? It's absolutely anonymous. As we go through a couple of the comments, you may recognize your comments, but nobody else will ever know who that is, including me. So 50 responses, and I haven't included all of the questions, but just kind of hit some of the highlights so you can see what the responses are. So club meetings are a good use of my time. Overall, um, agree and somewhat agree. So this is positive, as long as we're in the in the green and the blue, there's not too much for us to focus on. My club does, does a good job of involving new members. Some might disagree. So there's uh, some opportunity for us to um, address this. And we talked about member, member engagement. My club actively seeks to uh, involve all members in projects and activities according to their interests, skills, and availability. Some might disagree, and uh, I think that's one disagree. So um, there's an opportunity for improvement there. The amount of fundraising activities is appropriate. Again, there's some somewhat disagree, disagree. Um, so we can, um, and we're already starting to have a look at, at that. Um, our weekly meetings allow for the development of professional connections at networking. Some would agree, somewhat disagree. So there's um, a, a kind of two camps on this one almost. I think the Rotary International updates at our weekly meetings are good, poor, very poor. So there might be uh, an opportunity for us to change those out, do it differently. Which of the following service projects are you aware of? Um, so uh, very much from the food bank um, and the least to kids helpline. So opportunity for us to, to speak to, do follow up presentations on um, those projects that we support and uh, provide updates to the club. Club's total number of service projects is too few, just right, too many. So again, two camps and we need to delve into that and, and find out why that is. Club service projects are meaningful, so that's, this is good, positive. My club does a good job communicating to members, agree, somewhat agree, little bit of opportunity for improvement there. Good job listening to members. A little bit, somewhat disagree. My club seeks input and ideas from members. Pretty positive agree, but um, there's a few that we need to bring in. My club regularly acts on inputs and ideas from members. Uh, pretty good, so, so that's encouraging. I think my club is changing too fast. Disagree, so positive change going forward, that's, that's good to see. Club works to update club processes and rules to meet the needs of its members. Again, pretty positive, um, but a few maybe just need to uh, need to clarify. Preferred form of communication, uh, emails. I think Laszlo would debate that one. Uh, weekly bulletin, uh, club runner district emails, um, and we can you know we'll definitely look at those as well. I feel valued in my club. 
So there's a few that we need to specifically uh, follow up with um, just to see what that somewhat disagree is about, but um, pretty strong overall. My club provides opportunities to use talent, my talents and skills. Um, there's a chunk that say somewhat disagree, so um, you know we can explore that one further as well. My experience as a member is worth the money I spend on Rotary participation. One disagree, one somewhat disagree. Overall, pretty good. My family sees value in my Rotary membership. Again, pretty pretty positive. Um, a little bit of a shift here. My friends see value in my Rotary membership. So um, there, there might be an opportunity there. I invite my friends, family, and colleagues to club events. Um, mostly agree. I invite qualified prospective members to join my Rotary Club. Um, there's a bit of a spike in the somewhat disagree, dis disagree. So um, we need to find out what's, what's behind that as well. I frequently participate in my club's activities, projects, and programs. Uh, pretty strong there. I'm proud of my Rotary Club. This is impressive, like just almost right off the scale. So that's so great. Noting that annual dues are, this is Laszlo's favorite, noting that annual dues are $400, I would say that my club dues are too low, just right, too high. Um, I wanna talk to those people who say too low because um, we can help you out with that. Um, the too high might be a, a bit of a communication and a reminder of um, where those fees go and Laszlo has that covered so we'll address that. I know what the collected club dues go towards covering. I think I do. Yes, no. Um, again, Laszlo is going to cover this one so that's good. Noting the cost for breakfast, we can never win this one. $20, it's just right or it's too high. Um, I'm surprised that nobody, nobody said too low because, you know, never mind. Um, so uh, there's, there may be some education there or um, as we have conversations with the Sturgeon, um, we'll see what that go, where that goes, but certainly not a new conversation. Requests for donations to service projects are just right too much. So there's a, a pretty big chunk there um, and there may be some insights in the, the comments that we can explore. What impact has the current pandemic and resulting economic downturn had on your personal financial situation? Some impact, but manageable. It made things difficult. Um, and nobody said things are critical for their personal financial situation. For business, that's a pr pretty big shift. So some impact is pretty big. Things, uh, it's made things difficult. Um, and there's a, a, a few that have said things are critical. So um, there is definitely an opportunity for us to reach out and provide support to our fellow club members. Would you support the creation of a fund to partially cover club costs for members impacted by the economic downturn? Um, mostly yes, but there's a pretty big group that said no. So um, there may be an op opportunity for us to have a conversation around that, uh, depending on um, where we're at financially. This survey was a good use of my time, something we should do regularly, easy to complete, um, made some comments. It was too long. I, I know, I heard that, I'm sorry. Um, uh, missing questions, that's, um, I, I agree, but it was too long. I've been a Rotarian for less than a year, uh, three to five years, so a pretty good range here of um, representing new Rotarians, long-term Rotarians. Uh, and I'll go quickly through, this is absolutely not all of the comments, but this is some of the highlights and um, uh, you might recognize some of your own comments. Most speakers um, are very interesting, should not have any requests for money at our meetings. These should go to the proper committee. Teacher of the Month is great. Well, sorry. Click. Uh, engaging new members, leveraging the sponsor is vital for retention strategy. Getting new members engaged, there was a checklist to do, but never done by assigned people. I notice some people are, aren't all that fond of each other, but generally it's a friendly group. That's encouraging. Huh? Yes. 
Involve all members. Don't know if anyone has asked what they want to do. They should. Okay, we will. Fundraising activities. Keep working on a plan for the money ahead of time. Thank you for that. We will definitely do that. Fundraising activities. Really concerned about whether we're going too far. We rely far too heavily on some very committed members and we don't want to exhaust them. Absolutely agree. Not sure if there's enough understanding of the correlation of our fundraising events and what we support. Fair enough. Committee chairs are given an opportunity to speak every week, but few do. While the board likely gets reports monthly, it would be nice for the general membership to get occasional updates. And we will do that at the um, club assemblies. Morning meetings. We really have 15 minutes before the meeting to socialize. Well, not this morning. Most people rush out after. Is socializing really the goal for these meetings? If it is, we should build in more time for it. Fair enough. We need to do our monthly vocational talks. For professional connections and networking, this should be a secondary spin-off. Service is the reason for existence. Virtual meetings, nothing replaces the real thing, but Zoom seems to be a great platform for now. Zoom, it works when necessary. However, it should not replace in-person meetings. It would be nice if combining Zoom meeting with in-person meeting for people that can't attend. Absolutely agree. Um, definitely looking at a hybrid model going forward. Service projects, not clear who we're supporting financially. So there's a, an awareness opportunity there. Need more communication and transparency to the club members. Our website should be used more to communicate what our club is doing both internally and externally. And we're starting to explore that a little bit. Um, every opportunity is there for a member to express an opinion either publicly or privately. So encouraging folks, if you have an opinion, send me a note um, or speak up at a meeting. All those uh, options are available to you. We need to be better at communicating back. What did we hear and what did we do with the information? Very good. I think whoever has the idea needs to run with it. <laughs> I like that one. Sometimes new innovative ideas are not tried. Okay. And there may be many reasons for that. Any club that does not change will die. We are evolving, but not fast, and we are mindful of our traditions. Events are overtaking us. We need a fundamental rethink on fundraising and service delivery balance. So long as every member has an opportunity to serve, we will have met our responsibility as an organization. Club processes. This is where change needs to happen, but many of our members resist this change. Maybe members would like more communication from committee chairs so they'd be aware of all the things our club is involved with. We just get reports when being asked for something, not sure how well that is working for everyone. Very good. As long as I pay my dues, I'm valued. Our fees seem higher than most. E-club is 250. So we will uh, uh, increase awareness of that. Experience with Rotary. You get back what you put in. If you aren't feeling it's worth your time, put in more time and you'll get more value from Rotary. We don't always hear about the difference we make, okay? Our club makes minimal international impact that I can see. However, RI makes significant impact. Being a part of the bigger picture helps the outlook. Invite prospective members. I've mentioned it to some of my contacts, but nobody's interested, okay? So maybe we need to uh, assist with uh, packaging approaches, training. Um, we don't realize how wonderful a club we actually have. I've attended other club clubs and this club is wonderful. Here, here. Question 41, oddly worded question. I absolutely agree. Thank you for pointing that out. That's awesome. Club finds, this is part of our socialization, act socialization activities. Fundraising should be a spin-off. Please don't assign an expected financial target for this activity. So that, that's uh, sergeants at arms. Cost for breakfast, way overpriced for a meal with little variety. Request for donations, reinforce culture of okay to ask and okay to not give every time. Sometimes due to the schedule of the events, they are too frequent, multiple asks at the same time. I do recognize from hearing from other Rotarians that all of the fees are a burden to them, okay? Creation of a fund to cover fees during pandemic. Yes, I think the value of having people around the table is higher than the $400 that each member brings. I would also expect that once people get back on their feet, the 400 that was waived would be returned in the form of a donation or similar. People's input far outweighs their membership dues. I'm a longtime member of the club and I've watched the club grow to what it is today. I've done my part over the years to grow the club, but I'm happy to sit back and watch the new generation run the club. 
I stay in the club mostly because of the friendships I've developed. Interesting. Feedback on the survey, redos of changes are made to reflect majority rule on some of the issues. Thank you. I realize you need feedback, but it's kind of long. Thank you. So recommendations for the incoming board, just about done. The need will be overwhelming in our community for help over the next year or so. I feel strongly that we should drain our bank accounts if we see the need. Something for the board to definitely ponder. We have a large gap in income and financial circumstances between the top 10% and bottom 10% of our membership. We need to think about the bottom 10, say six to eight of our members who are not as comfortable. We need them and we want them. We need to explore engaging new members. The older generation are only going to be around for so long. Their leadership and knowledge can be shared with the younger group. However, the younger group needs to be in the room for that to happen. I'm beating a dead horse, but here are two points. We have to look at projects that are financially feasible, and we have to be dedicated and committed to at least three known projects, meaning we contribute to those three year after year. We can look at other projects, but must be consistent for the main three. We need to focus on community projects. I realize we can't do the Stop Hunger, Hunger Project, but it keeps coming up because it was such a big success and very rewarding. Some of the same for the Christmas hampers. As people age, it's easier to write checks, but the soul of Rotaries and the community projects would like to see three to four hands-on projects per year. Thanks for sending this to us. Might be quite useful as part of the annual club assembly input. Need to be still be sensitive to importance of individual ideas, uh, inputs and ideas, and not make our plans based solely on questionnaire-based majority wants and views. I believe Rotary does good work, important work, good important work. There are times I feel the purpose is, is lost or forgotten. I think we should have a segment at each meeting for five minutes to update members what a particular avenue of service is up to. It makes the chair and committee accountable and would be informative. It creates more of a focus on what we're there for in the first place. Same with RI. So that's the membership survey. And um, I very much appreciate um, those folks who participated. Again, it was 50 out of, I think it was 63 at that time. So um, great input and provided um, a really strong evidence base for making decisions going forward. So if we go from that to um, what is the context from Rotary International, um, Rotary's core values, as most of you are quite familiar with, fellowship, integrity, diversity, service, and leadership. Mm, Rotary's vision statement is together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. And out of the Rotary International Strategic Plan for 20 to 25, priority one is increase our impact, expand our reach, enhance participant engagement, increase our ability to adapt, increase our ability to adapt. And then if we look at Rotary International's areas of focus, um, after some discussion, uh, reflection on the survey, um, we looked at basically focusing in on these three areas, disease prevention and treatment, community economic development, maternal and child health. And so you're likely familiar at this point with um, the Rotary International 2021 theme, which is Rotary Opens Opportunities. And these three doors represent Red for Rotaract, yellow for interact and blue for rotary so it's intentional profiling those um, three areas of rotary international um, laura you quoted uh, holger i will quote you white rack uh, help rotary expand its reach by searching out opportunities for new interact and rotaract clubs in your area or explore new club models such as satellite or online clubs and this one was um a little surprising to me just because of the context of COVID, but um, uh, there's a lot of encouragement to, to continue the efforts to end polio. And um, I know many of you are aware that Rotary International is um, leveraging the infrastructure um, to end polio to uh, assist with uh, addressing COVID-19. So, out of all of that, we had a lengthy discussion 
And these are uh, our top three strategic priorities. Support, support those in need in our community, specifically related to the impact of COVID-19 through service and financial support. Take steps to enhance our club's growth network and encourage fun and fellowship. So when we start talking about our strategic plan, our vision for 2020, this is, um, as the Brits would say, far too on the nose. This is, um, you know, 2020 vision, seeing clearly, you know, it's, you're gonna see a lot of this around. Um, based on everything that we discussed, we're really looking at three lines of sight. So really a trifocal approach. So firstly, eyes on the task. So this is what we are doing currently. A look back, we are in our 30th anniversary year. So we want to celebrate that. And um, we'll talk a bit about um, a project that's being explored. And then focus forward, which is um, building for the future, um, ensuring that the club will be vibrant going forward, um, encouraging new members, et cetera. So eyes on the task, our current environment, COVID-19 recovery support. Um, this is the core of what we're focusing on for our virtual gala. And um, as per the work that the, the task group um, that was uh, set up by Anne that Craig led, um, there's a lot of need there and it's difficult to set priorities, but um, there's, there's definitely um, needs to be a focus. Um, not forgetting polio club profile um, started a bit with um, this past Wednesday with um, an ad profiling our uh, incoming board and there are other opportunities for us to share what we do uh, encourage others to support us encourage others to join us um, looking at uh, potentially a new fundraising model because um, obviously we can't do a lot of the fundraising that we've done in the past. The flag program has done really well. Um, the gala program has evolved. Um, there are district and other grants uh, available and we did apply on uh, two district grants. Uh, one to uh, support a, a contribution to SAFE that was approved and another one um, a part of uh, scholarships for high schools, um, the program that we have in place, and that one was approved as well. So we have um, already made some progress in that direction. Uh, leverage the technology, either Zoom or um, other online platforms. We're talking about some um, uh, doodle poll, um, using that for different things, but making sure that we provide the appropriate supports for those who might not be comfortable with it. Um, and absolutely member engagement and evolve and adapt as we need to. Um, a look back, this is um, something that um, I've already had uh, a conversation at the board level about, but um, had a specific conversation with Alan yesterday about this project and we started to kind of carve out what this might look like and um, he's agreed to spearhead this initiative and see where this might evolve to but um, really the the vision is to um, do a concept comprehensive record of our history do a year by year collecting of the projects that we did what was happening those years um, I don't want to get into too many too much detail because um, there'll be lots of follow-up on that but um, um, I think a really very interesting project um, way to get past presidents, boards, projects, um, profiled, engaged, um, produce a document, could be a website, potentially, um, even for, you know, there's a, um, um, the museum through Anne is already engaged to do um, document archives, um, but we could um, take that up a notch and include, um, there was uh, invitations from the, the original um, one of the original events Laszlo has and um, you know, those kinds of things just to preserve our history. Um, so it's not just a, a document that we produce and put on the shelf. It, there's an opportunity for us to 
as those uh, highlights are coming together for us to share those with our communities as social media posts or maybe ads to uh, celebrate our year, celebrate our years of achievement, uh, but also you know, provide a bit of profile for um, those projects that we've championed over the years to demonstrate um, how the impact that we've had in the community. Um, might be an opportunity, a natural opportunity for us to reach out to past members and even involve youth programs for the past. Where are they now? What are they doing? And uh, focus forward. So this is member engagement and, in, and recruitment. Um, it absolutely ties in with the Rotary International theme. Um, what we're doing is um, we're going to be forming a community Rotaract club. And Laura has agreed to be president nominee of that club um, and also have uh, dual uh, membership. So that will be going through the approval processes. Uh, we're also looking at forming a community interact club. So that will bridge across um, all of the high schools and um, we will all engage with St. City um, across both of those. Um, Craig and I have talked about how do we extend our impact by looking at planning uh, across multiple rotary years. So um, we can leverage some of what we're doing now for 21-22. Uh, um, and we really need to make sure that we, um, especially in the current environment, COVID-19, maintain this perspective of keeping our eyes open, 360. Um, who needs help in our club, in our community, in our network? Um, we looked at Rotary's vision statement. Together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, in ourselves. And we, we thought about um, within the context of our strategic plan, um, potentially a vision statement, and this is still a work in progress, we're the service club that supports COVID-19 recovery and engages youth in our community, kind of gets to the core, um, but that's definitely still a work in progress. Uh, and this is the list of our club goals for the coming year. Um, the environment has changed uh, from a reporting perspective in that um, we only need to achieve three of these um, because of the, um, the COVID environment. We have reduced activities. Um, we have reduced uh, resources, et cetera. So um, this is kind of the list that we're looking at. Um, so we will, uh, this is obviously on, um, I think it's on my rotary, but um, we'll definitely share this to make sure that um, everybody is up to speed on that. Uh, and we want to make sure that we, um, as per the feedback from the uh, membership survey, there was lots of comments about regular feedback, opportunities to report. Um, Rotary International, even the district, recommends four to six uh, club assemblies during the year. So we're looking at doing quarterly club assemblies. We're having uh, one, there'll be some more information coming out um, just towards the end of July, but we'll, we will check in on where we at with progress on our projects, what are the new updates, what changes are we making, but we want to make sure that we focus on fellowship and fun. Um, I was going to have questions here, but um, what I'm going to do, Laszlo, is I will skip to the budget presentation here. Um, I will try and zoom in on this and if you want to uh, speak to this. It's a beautiful blue screen. Oh, is it? I was looking at the beautiful blue screen you're presenting there. Oh. No, no, I'm kidding. Just... <laughs> You're messing with me, man. <laughs> okay, so you can you see it? Can you see the spreadsheet? Yes? Nope. No, cannot. Cool. Uh, 
Let's try this. I could share my spreadsheet that. Oh, how about there that? You go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So for the cloud, everybody, I just showed the June uh, 30th uh, final numbers there where our club assets are at 142. Now, if you go to the right hand side uh, for our budget 20, 2021, you have to subtract everything that we're going to be doing the next little uh, next week. <laughs> So roughly 39,000 for uh, all kinds of little things. So basically you'll see $103,000 that we have in our club coffers. And what I just uh, did was you divide that by two and basically that is the amount of money that's gonna go to uh, uh, the budget for this year and half as a reserve for next year. So we're down to about 62,693 for the budget. Um, and I broke it down in individuals from there. So 15,000 again, back to all the uh, various uh, service areas. And that leaves over 17,000 for other events like Music Festival, Salvation Army. We thought we'd still have some youth exchange money because as you'll notice, we don't have the full 12,005 for youth exchange because we don't have it this year. And we kept on going down and then hopefully for Craig's year, we right now we have at least sixteen twenty six thousand dollars for the flag program, um, and we're hoping to add another two hundred flags for next year or more. <clears throat> but the bottom line is that's the amount of money we'll fundraise out of the flags, and the rest are what are we going to do for fundraising? Because whatever we do, uh, just adds to the bottom line. So it works out to forty seven thousand for Craig for next year because I'm going to put another forty seven thousand aside for uh, reserve. But whatever we fundraise will increase that number. Is there any questions on that? No questions? Awesome. Nicely done. Well, hang on. You got a question? <laughs> um, nice. People had questions regarding your dues. So can we go back to oh, that? Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. No worries. So under dues, a lot of people wonder what your $400 does. Um, so this, I, I broke it down right to the dollar. So membership dues, there's uh, 62 people that pay dues. Um, that's roughly $24,800. We generate some interest in the club. This year it's gonna be minor. Um, and then sergeant fines. I know people wonder what the sergeant fines are for, but they're actually part of our operating. This is what it breaks down to, to the exact dollar. So our Rotary International dues, 7,500 bucks for all of our members. Our district dues are $6,000. Now we have things like promotions and fireside. These are just advertisements and everything we do, like to Staples, um, to the Gazette. So roughly $5,000 there. The President's uh, International trip, we always pay for the President's trip. This year, uh, it's zero. Because, uh, and we actually still have some money, I think, did, uh, Mark, that uh, we couldn't get back from the flights, correct? Yeah, we just got points. Yeah. So, we'll have to so, so we didn't spend any money there, but usually we set aside 5000 We do have an employee. That's 1500 District conferences, office supplies, bank fees, club runner fees, um, employee breakfast. Um, wine draw, Zoom annual mailbox. And you'll notice that the club dues um, are still minor by $203. So we're still short. So if you ever wonder what 400 bucks covers, that's it. This is operating. And I, I, I'm proud of our club that not one of our dollars comes from fundraising to cover operating. So we cover all of our operating expenses. Does anybody have any questions on their dues and why it's 400 bucks? <laughs> Speak now. <laughs> I think that's pretty clear. Actually, I'm going to just commend you for that no fundraising coming out of the fees. Um, I have a couple people that I know out in the Rotary world that left their clubs because they were paying for three or four <laughs> trips of executives to go to things like district and international conference. And they didn't feel that was very Rotarian, so good on you. Great point, Charlene. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Lazo. 
we'll go back to here. So that was the budget. And that was there. Moving on. I will get this figured out. Ian, this is when we used to sing. <laughs> I like it. So that was uh, basically an overview of the strategic plan. Any questions overall on any of that at this point? I know it was a lot. Mark, will you be sending, can you send that out to all the members? Absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. Okay, good. Um, reports and announcements, flag program. Laszlo, anything you'd like to uh, address on the flag program at all? No, I, I, I think it's covered other than we're picking up flags on Monday, this Monday. We're all okay with that? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I want to apologize. I wasn't really clear in my um, covering memo. I did not mention specifically that we had changed the date. I had it on where you signed up, but um, Clarity in communication is really important. So, <laughs> now, I'll be sending out a brand new pickup list because we've added quite a few flags from the original delivery date. Mm -hmm. Just a clarification when we say Monday, that's the earliest, right? Because it's from yes. Monday to Wednesday. Correct. Yeah, so Wednesday is still okay if we do it that yeah. way. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. La Laszlo, um, yes, I notice uh, some of the flags are getting a little weary and yes. normally these this is uh these are repaired in the off season but you know i hate to see some of these tattered things out there i wonder if the club has a supply of of flags that we could actually replace the flag ourselves while we're while we're picking picking it so up one yeah so we do have some extra flags what up one of my thoughts is Whoever's picking up the flags, if storing it at your house is an option, and maybe that's a thing to do, and we can repair the flags um, right away after pickup. So that's, I'm thinking, I'm going to go pick up some flags maybe today or tomorrow, and we can repair. The, you're right, there's some flags that are looking rather tattered, and I've been getting some calls too, so that tells you something. So good, good point, Bob. Okay. Laszlo, clarification. Uh, yeah. Are you sorry? Are you encouraging members to, if they can, keep the flags that they're on their route at their homes as opposed to taking them to the office? Yes, I, I would encourage that if we could. Okay. If not, that's fine. Take it back to Rob's. But once they end up at Rob's, the Rob's shop, they don't get looked after because there's like 500 there. So it'd be nice to kind of take care of our flags. But could we uh, not flag the ones that need repair? I also have a stand, for example, that needs repair. Uh, can we flat? Can we say, maybe get Robert or somebody just to get a, a an area and say, put flags needing repair here mm. and put the other ones into the old into the bin. Yes. Yeah, but but like I said, it ends up at Robert's shop and then it gets buried. Okay. So I'm just wondering if maybe this weekend, if we take off the flags, like after this weekend, uh, we don't take them back to Robert's shop right away. We just quickly go through. It's easier to go through 25 than it is 500. Yeah, okay. my point. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you for that. Uh, guest speakers, Daria, if you had a few points that you wanted to cover, yes? Yes, I do. Just a few quick ones. So I uh, started working on lining up a uh, presenter for us and I have few asks of our uh, club members. So I was hoping that we can get some organizations that uh, we funded through uh, community services and international services committees. 
come back to us and tell us about the projects that uh, we funded and the difference that we made. Um, also, any presenters that um, you think that club would be interested in, if you can reach out to me and let me know um, who I may be able to contact and see if they can come and talk to us. Um, and then also just any topics that you're interested in that would really help me identify speakers and uh, reach out to them. And any members that are interested in doing a vocational talks, so reach out to me and let me know. We have two days available in July and I'm looking at uh, August booking because um, for some presenters, July was a bit of a short notice. And that's it. Wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, our virtual gala fundraiser is happening this coming Tuesday. Um, we have, I believe, 176 tickets sold at this point. Um, there's a bunch that are at home, but mostly at our five sponsor restaurants. Uh, and thanks to everyone who's been participating in helping to pull that together. It's been a really uh, interesting ride. And um, Leanne, we're hoping that you can participate from a distance. So if you want to dial in, we'll, we'll send you the information. Nice to see you. Uh, our, so our first club assembly is planned for July the 23rd. Um, we'll send out reminders of this, but uh, what we're looking at is um, uh, encouraging members to sign up for uh, the various committees, um, even uh, working groups, because we have some um, other additions this year, the historical project, um, even uh, Rotaract Interact potentially, depending on um, the leads of those two groups, what supports they need. Um, but uh, the uh, chairs of each of the individual committees will be making presentations uh, about um, what they're looking at for the year, uh, even, um, I mean, it's fine to say, you know, based on the strategic plan and the outline, we need to get together a group and decide how we move forward. So um, there is, uh, that's underway. Is there anything else that any of the committee chairs would like to speak to? It's, it's a bit early in the year, um, but anything else? No, okay. Um, our next meeting is July 10th and our guest speaker is Stephanie Harp. She's an international advocate for murdered, missing, and exploited Indigenous peoples, and she's program coordinator at the Institute for the Advancement of Aboriginal Women. Birthdays and anniversaries. Um, there was a question from Stacy yes. online. Yes, please. Um, she was wondering on the 23rd if there's also then a meeting on the 24th. Uh, there will not be. It will be the the club assembly will be instead of the morning meeting on the twenty fourth. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Noreen Caustic has a birthday on July third. Um, we have a gaggle of anniversaries here. Um, Colin and Julie Steffs twenty years on July the first. Um, Mark and Alana Moran, 14 years on the 8th. Doug and Grace Webster, 31 years on the 8th. And Jody and Mark, four years on the 9th. Uh, Day joined Rotary. Oh, Daryl, July 1st, 20 years. Really impressive. Congratulations. Uh, Kim Bagheera, July 1st, five years. Myron Caustic, also 20 years on July 1st. July 1st, good year, good day. Um, and Fern Prue, July 6th, 13 years. So congratulations, everyone. Uh, some quick Rotary International and District updates. Virtual International Connection, I don't know if you, at convention, I don't know if you caught any of the sessions, but if you go to the convention websites, all of the, the recorded videos are there. So you can look at the main sessions, breakout sessions. Um, there's some uh, quite interesting ones there. Uh, the District 50, 5370 conference is on September 12th. And um, Rotary International Con Convention is in Taipei, June 12th to 16th of 2021. 
Um, and we had our changeover just this past week. And there was quite a lovely turnout. Just some highlights from that. We had, this is our first, first um, hybrid event with uh, folks online. And kudos to uh, Laszlo and Craig. Um, Laszlo, thank you for hosting. Um, Craig uh, did the a vegetarian dish and Laszlo obviously packed some meat. It was incredible. Look at that. Amazing. And um, sort of socially, physically distanced, but um, it was difficult because obviously this was our first get together in quite a while. Good conversation and food was had by all. Nice opportunity to get together. And there's John enjoying mid enjoy. <laughs> so there's that. And now our sergeants at arms. John Carl, Mark Moran. I'll hand it hey, over. Good to morning, you. everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? Um, we're really excited because we're going to completely change up the rotary sergeant process uh, for this year. Uh, we figured with it, with a new start, it would be a great opportunity for us to uh, to try a couple of new things and maybe to let go of some things that have have run their course. So um, let me just find a few notes here. Mark, are you on? I'm here. Have. Awesome. Mark, Not welcome. Mark. Me, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Other Mark. The important Mark. Not the president. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're, we're, we're going to change the program up here uh, with Mark involved. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to say goodbye and goodnight to the wine draw. Uh, the wine draw is costing the club about $750 a year. Uh, there's no real way for us to recoup money, um, given that we're not in person for the next while. Anyway, it just seemed like it was a good time to move on to something a little different. Um, there will be draws, there will be contests, there will be wine. Don't worry, there'll always be wine with this club. Um, it's just going to take a different form. It's going to be a little different. Uh, no comments from the peanut gallery. Uh, Mark, do you want to carry on? Yeah, so to change things up and to do a little bit something different, and because John and I are very competitive, uh, we're going to do uh, something a little bit called uh, Mark versus John. There are going to be competitions. Have you guys seen the email that went out on Wednesday? Uh, so hopefully you put your bets in. I only think there's eight people that put bets in. Yeah, we can do better than that. Yeah. But it, it's our first week, so it's all, it's all good. I won't uh, find anybody for that. Um, but anyways, yeah. So we're gonna do a little bit of competition. You're gonna vote, and then whoever uh, voted for the right person, uh, you will be put into a, a chance to uh, win the fifty, or that the half of the money. So I think Mark, do you have the link to the video? Yes, sir. Would you like to see that now? I think so. Let's uh, go through the competition. Show it. Yeah. Can't see it. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Get that screen off. Well yeah. intentioned. Well intentioned. We've got a forehead talking. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anita, can you mute yourself, please? We can't hear the video. Oh, 
of Mark versus John, or John versus Mark. So there you have it, guys. Mark, congratulations on your uh, noble victory for our first contest. I'll get you next week. Don't worry. Yeah, no worries. It's all good. And there's just a couple chairs harmed in this video. <laughs> so on that, we had four people vote for me which they are fantastic people, by the way. And we had four people vote for John. And one So uh, out of the people who voted for the winner, uh, we have Jerry, Doug, Mark, and uh, Mark Dixon and Charlene. So Natalia, uh, if I get you unmute your can you randomly pick a number between them? Think about it hard. Um, I would say a six. Six? I don't have a six. Four. <laughs> <laughs> so numbers between one and four. Okay, so let's go with three. Three, all right. That is Doug Campbell. He's the big winner and will share 50% of the winnings. Good job, Doug. I think it's eight bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's about six bucks. But anyways, and he <laughs> parties, so he's playing both sides. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he played for both. So, but uh, yeah, we, we appreciate everyone participating. It's going to be fun. We're going to pick a different thing every week. Um, feeding into that, we, we found in the, the last half of last year that collecting fine money, collecting donations through e-transfer was just a little bit of a challenge. Um, you know, e-transferring two bucks is difficult when you have to pay a dollar fee to do it. Um, you know, people forget, some people don't know how to do it. Um, it was just, it was a little bit of a challenge. So what we're going to do this year um, is we're going to allow you to run a tab. So you don't have to e-transfer us $2 every week if you want to compete in the, the Mark versus John. You don't have to send two bucks for your fines. Um, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, Talia, can you mute yourself? Um, I'm, 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 Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to run a monthly tally for you. We'll, we'll add everything up and then we'll send you a money request at the end of the month asking for your, all the money that you've, you've committed to for the month. So it'll keep the number of e-transfers down for you. It'll make it easier. Uh, hopefully it'll help with the accounting to make Laz's life easier. Um, so yeah, there's definitely that option. So feel free to participate in Mark versus John and any of the other contests that we have. Um, and with that, Mark, do you want to announce our first initiative yeah so as i think it comes back by popular demand is the uh chase the ace event i think everyone really enjoyed that uh and raised a decent amount of money so we're gonna bring that back next week and we'll do that uh, virtually somehow john and i will figure that out throughout the week so that'll be for the next eight weeks or so and then we have a couple other events planned throughout the year so you just stay tuned Fantastic. I have a question. Uh, go ahead, Doug. Um, can we uh, suggest competitions? Uh, everyone except you can, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> I mean, yes, Doug, you can absolutely suggest competitions. We would love to hear it. Just don't be surprised that if you suggest a competition or if you get really, really vocal, uh, we might bring you into the next competition. 
Um, <laughs> this isn't only Mark versus John. It could be Team John versus Team Mark. So uh, it could be. This is going to change up every week. So, uh, yeah, but I'd love to hear your ideas, Deb. That would be All wonderful. Right. Thank you. Um, okay. Now, the last... <laughs> <laughs> I got a peanut gallery here behind me, Mark. Oh yeah. Um, with that, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to dramatically cut back the fines. Um, I'm not saying there will never be fines, but the goal that we have is to raise more money through uh, the competitions, through more money through some of the games that we've got going, and, and to keep it fun and entertaining. Um, I'll be honest with you, the last couple of months doing fines online have been a real challenge. Uh, I can only find the same three people for only showing their foreheads for so long. Uh, and eventually everyone doesn't think it's funny and obviously they're not learning. So um, yeah, we're, we're not pushing the, the, the fines as hard. There will be fines every once in a while. And of course we do welcome fines from the floor uh, at all time. Um, so there you have it. Uh, that that's the new new sergeant model or sergeants. And uh, Mark, I just want to say I'm really looking forward to this year with you. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Yes, I agree. I think we'll enjoy our little competitions and hopefully ever entertain everybody. That's the goal. Yeah. So with that, why don't we just call for any fines from the floor, um, and then we will wrap everything up. Going once. Going twice. We have absolutely no fines from the floor. It's fantastic. All John right. and Mark, could I have a question? Yes, Anita. Sure, Anita. My, yeah, my question is I'm not sure how to work the technology around what you're doing. So, is there um, another uh, solution to paying money to you guys if in fact I need to like can I write it write a check and drop it off at your house like we're going back old school I understand that but I need a comfort level as well as everybody else that's in the group so um, could you make some comments around that particular issue that's one it's of the only, reasons it's only my issue I know that but no, it isn't actually. There's a few few members of the club that either aren't comfortable with the online payment or have trouble figuring it out. So that's one of the reasons that Mark and I came up with the idea of going to the monthly billing model. Um, okay. So that rather than dropping off a check every week for $2, um, okay. which would just be asinine, um, we'll bill you monthly. And then if you want to drop a check off at the end of the month, that would be great. Uh, we would ask that you drop it to Laszlo, not to one of us, simply because he's the one who does the deposits. But we'll figure that out for you. And anything we can do to make taking your money from you easier, we will certainly do. Yeah. Uh, I figured that might be the case. I got a fine yeah. from the floor. The, the, uh, I'd like to find Anita $50 so that she could practice uh, writing that check and getting that <laughs> We'll make it to be delivered to my office, Anita, anytime. <laughs> okay. There you go. Did that work out well for you, Anita? Was that, was that convenient? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And if I can deliver it to Laz, that's just as good. So. Yeah. 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 We, we just want to make it easy for everybody. So great question, okay. Anita. And yes, we will definitely find a way to work with you on that. Okay. Thanks. Any other finds from the floor or questions? Okay. Mark, I think we're done. What do you think? I think we are done too. Everyone have a great week. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Mark and John. Really appreciate it. Um, such great initiative. This is going to be awesome. Um, thanks to Mark and John for that. Thanks to Leanne for joining us as our uh, out of province guest. Thanks to Laura for the inspirational moment at the spur of the moment. Uh, everybody for attending and contributing. And we'll, we will end with the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Say or do. Is it the truth? Is, Is it, it fair, fair to, all to all concerned? Will, will it build goodwill and better, better friendships? Better friendships?
will it be beneficial to all concerned services. Thank you, everyone.